First contact in Hawaii began with the celebrated arrival of the legendary Captain James Cook on January 19, 1778. In the spirit of aloha, hundreds of canoes and paddlers from the island of Kauai came to greet these ships of which no Kanaka Maoli had ever seen. A shore party was dispatched by Captain Cook and the first Hawaiian to make physical contact with a white man was summarily shot to death. The beginning of the Kanaka Maoli Holocaust began within seconds of first contact with Western culture. Most of the 760,000 soon to die would suffer the ravages of Western diseases. But many died of a condition that can effectively be described as a broken heart. 100 years later, of the estimated 800,000 original Kanaka Maoli population, 95% had been exterminated. The spirit of Aloha has had a difficult time indeed in surviving the onslaught of Western civilization. Whereas from 1826 until 1893, the United States recognized the independence of the Kingdom of Hawaii, extended full and complete diplomatic recognition to the Hawaiian government, and entered into treaties and conventions with the Hawaiian monarchs to govern commerce and navigation in 1826, 1842, 1849, 1875, and 1887. Treaties are basically contracts between two sovereign powers, two nations, and as such, the Kingdom of Hawaii and the United States of America enjoyed a treaty of friendship. It has been the policy of the United States since the foundation of the government to cultivate relations of peace and amity with all the nations of the world. And this accords with my conception of our duty now. A date which will live in infamy. Whereas, on January 14, 1893, John L. Stevens, the United States Minister assigned to the sovereign and independent Kingdom of Hawaii, conspired with a small group of non-Hawaiian residents of the Kingdom of Hawaii, including citizens of the United States, to overthrow the indigenous and lawful government of Hawaii. It had not entered our hearts to believe that these friends and allies from the United States would ever seize our nation by the throat and pass it over to an alien power. Perhaps there is a kind of right known as the right of conquest under which robbers and marauders may establish themselves in possession of whatsoever they are strong enough to ravish from their fellows. If we have nourished in our bosom those who have sought our ruin, it has been because they were of the people whom we believe to be our dearest friends and allies. 